Praise God. Well, I want to speak to you a prophetic word, not just for our church, but for the nation. And I really do encourage you to follow the instructions of Pastor Renee when she said, please share this word, uh, because I want to speak to you about where we are prophetically and what needs to happen in the church and with the people of God. It has been prophesied already in our service today. I'm titling this message, The Days of Ezekiel. And some of you have read little bits and pieces out of the book of Ezekiel, but really it's kind of like the book of Revelation. It's got a lot in there that becomes complicated and there's so many details that you can get bogged down. So we tend, we tend to pick a chapter here or a chapter there uh, about wading out into the water, into the depth, or um, about what I'm going to speak about, the valley of dry bones, uh, or uh, Ezekiel going up into the heavens and seeing the throne and the seraphim. Uh, but it, actually, this book of Ezekiel is the most thorough and practical and detailed flow of teaching on God's purposes with Israel and the end of times. It encapsulates it more than any of the other um, Old Testament teachers. So the days of Ezekiel, I believe, are upon us. Open your Bibles with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. <clears throat> I'm going to start reading in verse 1. There are 13 different places in the book of Ezekiel where the word of the Lord comes to Ezekiel and he gives an actual date and time. There's more dates and times given in the book of Ezekiel than any of the other books in the Bible so that we know exactly when these things happened. And his ministry lasted, at least what he wrote down, um, about 22 years. And in it, he gets vision after vision after vision. In fact, the whole book of Revelation is one vision coming after another vision, coming after another vision. And I've been teaching on Wednesday nights about dreams and visions. If you have not um, been able to be here, I really encourage you to go online, to go to YouTube or Facebook or our websites and listen to these messages. We will not succeed as the church in America to fulfill the purposes of God, his eternal purposes for America, Israel, and the nations, unless we become spiritual, unless we become supernatural. And that means that you have to learn to hear God beyond your logical reasoning and thinking. We need to have a spirit that is open so that God can inject to us the word that he has for us that we just can't get any other way. And it will come to you with dreams and visions and revelations from on high. Get ready. Already just in this last month, people who have not dreamt for a long time are dreaming again. And they're having amazing dreams, prophetic dreams, powerful dreams. Dreams uh, where they're flying and uh, dreams where uh, the church is involved and the purposes of God. And that's because uh, all through the Bible, the visions and the dreams are there. Every important person in the Bible had dreams and visions. There's over 200 different places in the Bible where God speaks about dreams and tells us about dreams. It's one of the ways that he wants to direct and empower the church. So get ready to become more spiritual when you're sleeping. You need to be spiritual when you're sleeping. And that means that the God of creation comes and speaks to you in dreams and visions. Here we are in Ezekiel chapter 37. We read, the hand of the Lord was upon me, Ezekiel says, and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and he set me in the middle of a valley, it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? 
I said, oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel responds, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, the north, the south, the east, and the west. O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then the Lord said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone and we are cut off. Therefore, prophesy to them This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people. I want you to say that with me. And look and just think now that you're saying this across the ocean into the land of Israel. Say, oh, my people. Ready? Oh, my people. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you now to speak the word of life into America, into Israel, and especially into your church, your chosen people. Lord, I ask that the words of Ezekiel will be our words. Lord, that you will put the breath of life in us that we may prophesy and see the day of the Lord here in America and around the world. Let it be initiated and started this day. We speak it forth now in Jesus' name, amen. This valley of dry bones is a picture of where Israel was at the time when Ezekiel prophesied. He said, these bones are the whole people of Israel. And they're very dry and dead. This is during the time of Babylonian captivity. In fact, when Nebuchadnezzar first came to Jerusalem and Israel, he took, before the place was destroyed, before the temple was destroyed, he captured and took 10,000 Jewish people back to his land of Babylon. 
Ezekiel was in that first group of people. There are several prophets that we think about in exile, such as Daniel, such as Ezra and Nehemiah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were people who we know of. But many do not know that Ezekiel was one of the first to be taken as a captive. Now Ezekiel started to prophesy. Here he is in the midst of the darkest situation that people could imagine. He is taken from his family, taken from his people. He has come out of war. And he's taken to a foreign land. And there, in the midst of darkness, God begins to reveal dreams and visions and revelations to him. Your focus should not be on the traumas of COVID. Nor should it be on the political darkness in America. Your focus should not be on the details of the struggles of humanity. All of those things are happening and they're horrific. But that is not our focus. Our focus is on the Lord who made heaven and earth, who is never late and never slow. We might ask ourselves why all of this is happening in the world. You might say, well, it's the devil. Well, it is. But you might also say, but God is allowing it. And he is. Then you come to the conclusion that Ezekiel, Daniel, and all of the prophets who were in Babylon came to. That there is a judgment upon the world and upon the church because of the abortions and the corruptions and the abuse of people, the hurting of the innocent, the racism, all of the wickedness that comes from man's greed, even what we see with the confusion over vaccines is there because of man's greed. Because people are wanting to make money. And so there are things that may be good and some things that may not be good. And there's so many voices out there. It's hard without the guidance of the Lord to know which is which. But in it all, you need to understand that there is a demonic entity at work in America and in the whole world. It's a murderous spirit. It's a dark spirit. It is one that wants to get rich off of the needs and weaknesses of humanity. And it's very much alive in Washington, D.C. It's all over. And because of the health reasons and our trust historically in the scientific community, the whole world, so to speak, generally speaking, is being led like sheep down a path and we do not know where it ends. And without the hand of God, there is no hope for America or the nations of the world. We need to see a resurrection from the dead, a resurrection of the church, a resurrection of the people of God, a new boldness coming inside. When these prophets in Babylon describe the valley of dry bones, they're talking about themselves. Where do you get a valley full of human bones? If not because of genocide and not because of war. It's because they were slaughtered. The Bible here says, can these slain live? Those who were slain 
will come back to life. They've been slain. The Bible says that at the end of time, there's famines and there's plagues and there's wars. And whole communities of people can be wiped out. Isn't it interesting that here's a valley of dry bones that are from people that were never buried. They were left there as carrion. And that's the situation, the darkness that the devil has planned for humanity. It's what the prophets in Babylon felt was the condition of their people. And he said, and behold, the bones were very dry. So many Christians in America don't have hope for revival. They don't have hope for the church to make a difference. They don't have hope for there to be an answer that will bring life and strength and liberty for all. They don't have that hope because they've been looking at the problem instead of looking at the solution. Our eyes need to be on the Lord these days. You need dreams from heaven that are outside of your own personal thinking where God comes in. You need to be taken up into the third heaven. You know, I'm so appreciative of this book of Ezekiel. It starts off where Ezekiel says that he's by the river and he's a captive in exile in Babylon. And suddenly he's caught up into heaven and he sees the four living creatures and he sees the seraphim and wheels within wheels and the whole movement of the supernatural hosts of heaven moving and organized. Beautiful warfare and ministry. That's how it starts. And then God takes him and shows him the sins of Israel. And he prophesies about the sins of Israel for the next 20 chapters. And then he comes to this place in chapter 22. Ezekiel does. And he says, these are the sins of Jerusalem. And they're all the same sins that bring curses over a nation. And those same sins that bring curses are here in the United States of America and in places of political standing. And at the end of this chapter, when Ezekiel prophesies about the sins in the land, he says, and God looked for a man. Woo. He looked for a man who would stand in the gap and build up a wall. Build up the wall so they wouldn't have to destroy the land. God's doing that right now. He's looking for a woman. He's looking for a man. See, there's a few people in the Bible who meet the qualifications for reformation and revival. They are both prophet and priest. Samuel was one of them. Remember Eli and his sons had brought wickedness to the temple and the people of God. And Samuel, he was from the tribe of Levi. He was a priest. And he was also really the first prophet of the Lord that stands out in scripture. Ezekiel is the same. He is a priest and he is a prophet. As a priest, he cares for people and intercedes for them, brings them before the Lord like a good pastor. As a prophet, he brings the word of the Lord to the people. Priest brings the people to God. Prophet brings God to the people. And we have a lot of prophets in the land. I'm talking about America right now who are not priests. 
They're speaking a word from God, but they're not caring for people. And then we have a lot of people who are priests. They're caring and pastoring, but they're not prophetic. They're not bringing the word of the Lord. They're just trying to comfort. But there are some. And this is a new day. It's an Ezekiel day. When both prophet and priest will be in the same person. Caring for the people and bringing the powerful prophetic word of God. And we need to see this come. This is your first place to pray. Because you see, Ezekiel begins to pray. And he sees these visions. He sees the vision of heaven and he sees all the revelation about the sins. And then he calls forth to the intercessors to pray and to build. To pray and to build up the wall. To stand in the gap and to build up the wall. And then he comes to this place where God gives him this revelation of the valley of dry bones. And he takes him by the spirit into this valley. And it says he moves him. Just imagine if you were Ezekiel and the Lord takes you and everywhere you're stepping, there's bones everywhere. Human bones. This huge valley with hundreds of thousands of people. Just their bones there now. Lying there. Abandoned. Hopeless. Finished. And then the Lord says to him, Ezekiel, my prophet, my priest, can these bones live? I want to ask you that question. When you look upon America today, and you see the devastation here and in the world, and maybe some of you have recognized that we're in a valley of dry bones, and behold, they're very dry. But the word of the Lord is where your focus should be. And the Lord says it. He speaks to you. He echoes it across the nations. Can these bones live? Hmm. Do you know that it came to pass? We don't know if Ezekiel was still alive. But within 50 years of Ezekiel giving this word, the temple was rebuilt by the hands of Ezra and, his, and Zerubbabel. And then within 70 years, Nehemiah was raised up to go and rebuild the city of Jerusalem and build its walls. And this resurrection picture of these bones coming to life again were fulfilled within one man's lifetime. Can it happen again? Well, it did. It did again and again throughout history. And it's going to happen again in the United States of America. But not without dreams and not without visions and not without supernatural anointing and not without the prophets of Ezekiel prophesying it first. Can these bones live? Three times the Lord says to Ezekiel, prophesy. He says, see these bones? Tell the bones. Hear the word of the Lord. America, hear the word of the Lord. You dry bones, self-sufficient in failure, without hope, only looking for the next booster shot. How many? Five, six, for the rest of your days? That's not God's answer. I guarantee you on that.
Now, I'm not judging anybody. Because everybody has done what they have felt God wanted them to do. And whether you've taken a vaccination or not, you did it in faith before the Lord. And God bless you. And he's able to heal you and protect you whichever way you stepped if you moved forward in faith. But that's not the issue. The issue is America needs the Holy Spirit. That's the issue. A political party will not solve our problems, but you should vote for somebody when the day comes who has biblical standards as best you can. But that's not the answer. The answer is wrapped up in these dead bones that are the church. The whole house of Israel. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Now I don't want to say that the church is Israel. This applies first of all to Israel. It applied to Israel in Babylon when it was given and it all came to pass within the next 70 years. But I want to take this word that was given to Israel and apply it to the church today. Because you've been grafted in. And all the blessings that were given to Israel are now given to you. The natural sap coming up from the roots. The blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob over your life. And without a resurrection of dry bones back to life again, there is no healing for America. As we go through this story, we find out that Ezekiel prophesies to the bones. And they start to come together. That would have been a sight. It would have been pretty freaky. Because at the end of the first stage, there's 100,000 skeletons without anything on them. And it says that when he prophesied, there was a big noise, like the sound of a rattling of dry bones coming together. I don't know what it's going to be like when revival starts in America. But I hope there's a big noise. If you're afraid of noise, get yourself some earplugs. Because when the Lord returns, he comes down from heaven with a shout. He does. And with the voice of the archangel. He's not playing a game. This earth is his. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And the day will come when he comes to claim his place of kingship over this whole planet, over America and over the United States and over Canada and over um, every nation in the world, over Israel, where he'll put his throne. It's undeniable. It's unstoppable. So the bones come together with this loud rattling noise. And then, right before, right before his very eyes, Ezekiel sees, like that show that's gone around with, with the bodies with no skin on them, body world. He sees all the flesh on the bones, and then finally the skin comes on them. But they're just bodies lying. The whole valley is filled with them. We would love to see that. Just the beginning stages. I really believe in the prophetic word about the, the children being called. Extraordinary children who are totally sold out to the Lord. Teenagers. People in their young 20s. People who aren't even teens yet, who the anointing of the Lord comes upon, will see dreams and visions. Just this past week, for the first time, Ethan told me he was flying in his dreams. 
Yeah. Watch and see. And then the Lord said a second time, prophesy. Three times he tells Ezekiel, prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Chuck, you keep on prophesying. But not you alone. But all of you must begin to prophesy. Say, Lord, keep me from just prophesying my own ideas. Keep me from prophesying just what people want to hear. God, I want to prophesy what you give me. Open my ear, Lord. Give me the words of heaven and walk humbly. Because nobody suffers from rejection and attacks like prophets. Welcome. Begin to prophesy. Let the anointing of Ezekiel come inside of you. The reason he can prophesy is because he had visions. Visions, visions, dreams, supernatural words from God. And when he did, he spoke them into existence. He preached. And this valley of dry bones is the place where it all shifts. When he prophesies about the valley of dry bones. And it says, prophesy for life to come from the four corners, from the four winds into these dead bodies. In the name of Jesus, we welcome the Spirit of God to come and move upon the church to fill the lives of Christians, to move in every area and in every sphere. Whoa, let it come now. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We speak it forth into this nation. And then, you know what the scripture says? That these bodies came to life and they stood up. A mighty army. They used to be an army. That's why they were lying dead bodies in the valley. Now they're an army again. They're not just the people of Israel. They're the army of Israel. They're the army of the people of God. And they stand up. And then the Lord said to Ezekiel, now you've done it with this symbolic valley of bones. Now look toward the nation and prophesy over the people. I will bring them back to their land and they will settle there. I will restore them and be their God and go before them again. That's for Israel. This is a prophetic word for Israel. But it's also a prophetic word for the nations. It's a prophetic word for the church. So I'm going to hand out some job applications right now. And I want to know which one you're going to be. I'm sorry, but all hands on deck. You say, I don't want to work? Well, we're going to drag you into the purposes of God. As best we can. With as much love and kindness and care as we can give you. But we need you. There's a call of God on your life. So I'm going to give you seven. Seven. Different job occupations now. They all start with the letter P. And like Ezekiel, you may be more than one. He was prophet and priest. You may find yourself like Pastor Elizabeth being a pastor and also being a pathfinder for the nation. Right? Give her a clap. But what about you? We need you now. You might say, I don't know what I can do. Well, you can do nothing until the Holy Spirit comes upon you and helps you to do it. But you have to be willing. That's where it starts. 
You have to say, Lord, here, here I am. Send me. So here they are. You can kind of say, well, I'm, I can be that and I can be that. Maybe you can be all seven. I don't know. If you were, you'd be an apostle for sure. The first one is a prophet. And all of you can prophesy. You just make sure you prophesy the right thing. You need to hear from God. The second job application is preacher. And I'm not giving you my pulpit. But you have to preach in the highways and the byways. And proclaim the word of the Lord. Proclaim the word of faith. See, a prophet, he projects and proclaims into the universe and into the air the plans of God regardless of what we see with our eyes. But the preacher, he is going to persuade and he's going to instruct. He's going to bring faith to people and encourage them with the word of the Lord. And the third thing the third job description is to be a people of prayer. And maybe that's what you are and who you are. You're a prayer warrior. You're an intercessor. Because the Lord is looking for those who stand in the gap and build up the wall. Not just builders who don't know how to pray or people who pray but don't build, but intercessors who start everything in prayer. So that's the third. Pastors, prophets, people of prayer. And then number five, six, and seven. Excuse me. Four. <clears throat> yeah, is pathfinders. And pathfinders are people who find a new way. They find a way through the forest So that people can follow. They provide a pathway. Like patriotic students of America. That's a pathway. To bring godly patriotism. Back to the nation. And then there are. Pilgrims. And pilgrims are people. Who are willing. To leave everything behind. To go forward into a new world. They go with a dream. And then there are pioneers. Pioneers are people who go even if they're just going with them and their family. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We're going to see the kingdom of God. We're going to see fivefold ministries come. We're going to believe in miracles. We're going to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to believe in tongues. We're going to believe in miracles. We're going to believe that God can change America. We're going to have that. That's what a pioneer does. And he says, it doesn't matter if everybody else is with me. That's what I'm going to do. That's a pioneer. And the last one is a planter. And uh, you can plant lots of things. You can plant a flag. You can plant a cross. You can plant a flower. You can plant your feet. <laughs> but it's time not only to take ground, not only to forge new places, but then to plant and settle and establish. So we're talking about revival. We're talking about a resurrection of the church. We're talking about restoration of the purposes of God and a reconstruction of his plants. So these are the days of Ezekiel. The first ones to begin to hear the Lord and to watch what he is doing in the nation 
and to begin to prophesy it into existence. After Ezekiel came others like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who restored faith for the people of God by their testimony and their example. Miraculous signs and wonders. Amazing rescues. And then there was Ezra who said, before we build the walls of the nation, we need to build the temple. The church has to be restored first. So Ezra, the reformer, went and he built the temple in Jerusalem before there was any walls to protect it. And then came Zerubbabel and Nehemiah. They were reformers. They went and rebuilt the city. They put laws, Ezra and Nehemiah, put laws into place so that the people of God could be what they were called to be. They were legislators. In a sense, they were politicians. But they were full of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. They were pioneers and planters. So, who are you now? Are you a prophet? Are you a priest? Are you a person of prayer? These are the days of Ezekiel, the first ones to hear from God. Perhaps it will all be that tonight, when you lay upon your bed, God will take you into the third heaven and show you some things that you're not allowed to tell anybody about. And he'll show you the seraphim and the angels and the Lamb of God standing before the throne. And maybe he'll show you the vast sea of souls that are there with their harps worshiping the Lord before his throne and waiting for their return to earth. Perhaps you'll come out of a dream like that this night. And then in the morning, you'll say, Lord... I'm an unclean person. And I live amongst an unclean person. And the angel of the Lord will take a coal off the altar and he'll put it to your lips and he'll purify you and sanctify you. And then he'll fill you with gifts and he'll say, woman of God, prophesy. Man of God, prophesy. Before good politics will come, Good church needs to come. Before righteous behavior will be in the land, righteous behavior needs to be in the church. You can't do it by your own strength and determination. You need a supernatural infusion of the Holy Spirit for these days. You need your eyes to be opened to catch a vision of the days of Ezekiel that we are in right now that this year is the beginning year. We already started to see little bits of it. I'm not saying that these things all have to go in a specific order. I'm happy for reconstruction and restoration and prayer all to be kind of mixed together and happen whenever it happens. The Bible says that at God's appointed time, the harvesters will overtake the planters. Just when people are starting to put the seeds in the ground so that things can can change and the fruit can come, the Lord says, you're too slow. And he brings in the harvesters and he takes the harvest. You say, what happened? God. Yeah. So this is the time. And I want you to come into the prayer of agreement with me. My first sermon to you this year was called Sons of Thunder. And now I'm bringing to you the days of Ezekiel. For the first half of this year, we're going to do everything we can to equip you to do the work of the ministry and to be the people of God. 
we're not responsible for all the church out there, but we are responsible for the church here. And you're the people of God that has been joined together here. And so with everything that we've got, we're going to do our best to put a thumbtack on your seat, to get you out of your chair, and to put some fire on top of your head, and to see you rise up in this hour to be an Ezekiel generation, to begin to prophesy and see it come to pass. Remember, the Valley of Dry Bones literally happened for the people of Israel within a person's lifetime. Will you stand to your feet now? And I'm going to just ask you to put your hands in front of you. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer in a minute, but just open your hands, please. Now I ask, Lord, that you would put fire in these hands, flames of fire in their fingertips and on their hands for signs and wonders and miracles. Lord, I ask you to surprise your people with the supernatural. I ask that those who have not had dreams to begin to dream dreams from heaven and to take them seriously and to ask God for proper interpretations and for the Lord to speak to you for you to get things right because of the warning dreams, for you to learn because of the teaching dreams, and for you to be empowered because of the glory dreams. I speak it over you now. O oh, people of Ezekiel, let the anointing come upon you now. I speak it in Jesus' name. Now would you pray this prayer? Say, Heavenly Father. Can you do it louder? Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you for saving me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and equip me for purpose. Help me to be in step with you. Teach me to prophesy and to preach and to pray and to restore and to, and to plant the goodness of the Lord in this nation, and in our community, and in my family. I open my life to hear from you, and to be empowered to do all that you want me to do. I receive it now, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Put your hand on your heart, and those watching online, I ask you to stop what you're doing and put your hand on your heart right now. You can't do this with good ideas. You need the power of heaven now. And I'm going to pray over you. In the name of Jesus, I open up all the deep places inside of you. I take off you the condemnation and the judgments that have caused you to step back that has taken away your confidence. I break its power and I speak new strength because it's not by might or power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord and His grace and goodness and His call on your life that was there before your failure and is still there today. And I speak strength to you. And I release the increased power of the Holy Spirit. I speak the joy of the Lord in your heart that you might sing the songs of Zion. And I speak the peace of God in your home, that you might hear from the Lord there. And I open the doors for your future, that you might walk where angels walk, hear what they hear, and move in step with the Lord. I speak divine grace over you, protection from every evil thing, that it won't come near your home. I speak it over you. No COVID in your house. And I speak life and blessing and the power of God to flow in you and through you and God's favor to be upon everything you do that you might see revival in your day. I speak it over you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and God bless these United States of America.